hello and welcome back. So today I want to continue working on the LM317 high voltage power supply by taking a closer look at overcurrent protection. Now a proper power supply should be capable of handling an overcurrent event or even an output short circuit. This is important especially during startup in case you have a very large output capacitor because this output capacitor needs to be charged up and for a short time it does behave like a short circuit but even after that a power supply should be robust and that among other things means that it needs to withstand just a bit of human misuse. Now the circuit that I've been working on that I presented last time at the moment does not survive an overcurrent event. It simply breaks. So what I want to do today is go through the debugging process to see exactly what happened and then try to find a solution to this. So if you're curious, then keep watching. So the first time I set up the circuit to try out the overcurrent protection, I slowly increased the current up until the point when the LM317 and the power transistor broke. Now, I wasn't sure if I did something wrong or if something was wrong with the circuit, so I swapped up the components and tried again. This time, the LM317 and the power transistor broke. At that point, I knew I had a problem. I'm running out of spare parts. I only had components for one last try. So I went back to the drawing board to try to figure out what happened. Now, my first reasoning on what was going on was that when the overcurrent is detected by the LM317, the output voltage drops because it's interrupted, but because the output voltage goes down to zero, the gate voltage of the power transistor, which is fed here through the Zener diode, also drops because we're maintaining the same voltage drop on the Zener, but for the source, where we have a large capacitor, there's nothing much to discharge it anymore. So the source voltage stays charged, and that means that we have quite a large voltage drop on the LM317 and also on the gate source. So this large voltage drop is what's causing the two transistors to break. And to fix that, the first thing I tried out was to take this diode, because we already have it in the schematic, and turn it from a Schottky diode into another Zener diode. So in case the output voltage drops down, we have another Zener diode to also discharge this source voltage. So even if there's a large capacitor there, it will get discharged through this diode to the output. And when I tried this out, the LM317, the power transistor, and my newly added diode broke. So I had to delay the video until I figure out what's going on and until some spare parts arrive. Next, I looked at some available schematics, so schematics that are supposed to be working, and look for some clues to what I did differently. Now, if we look into the schematic that is present in the LM317L datasheet, so this is a circuit that is rated for 170 volts operation, one of the things that we see that is different is the presence of this resistor. So between the power transistor and the LM317, there's an intermediate resistor. And the main reason why I did not want to add this is that regardless of what current is going through the circuit, whether it's in the normal operating region or not, you will have a voltage drop on this resistor, which will increase the minimum voltage drop on the entire circuit. So here they placed an 100 ohm resistor, and even at the 25 milliamp current rating, you still get about 2.5 volts of voltage drop on this, even if you're in the normal operating region. Another thing that was missing can be observed in the datasheet of the LT3080. It's a component quite similar to the LM317. And here they also made a high voltage regulator, but this time with a field effect transistor. And here they added a diode between the source and the gate. So here it's a normal diode, but this can also be a Zener diode to prevent excess voltage building up between the gate and the source. So into my circuit, I added this Zener diode and a 20 ohm 0805 resistor. And when I went to try this out, well, the resistor disintegrated and the power transistor broke. 
So I thought, well, the resistor broke because it couldn't handle the extra current. So I used a big 5 watt resistor. And with this resistor, when I tried the circuit out, well, the field effect transistor, the LM317 and my gate source Zener diode broke, but not the resistor. Regardless, th this was not getting me anywhere. So I went back to the data sheets to see what did I miss. Well, the first thing is the overcurrent protection of the LM317, which is not an overcurrent protection, but rather a current limit. And the current limit for the 100 milliamp LM317L is somewhere between 100 and 300 milliamps. So when you have a very large load on the output or even a short circuit, the 317 will limit the current rather than interrupt it completely to a value between 100 and 300 milliamps. And after it heats up, then it will disconnect because of the over temperature protection. So if we think back to the original circuit, say I'm supplying it with 300 volts and say the current limit is at 300 milliamps, that means that when a short circuit event does occur on the output, well, the circuit will be dissipating 90 watts, most of this being in the transistor. Now, an arrangement that can actually dissipate 90 watts doesn't look like this. I have way too small of a heat sink and the transistor can't even dissipate 90 watts. So even with an ideal heat sink, it couldn't do that. So what I need to do is first of all, get the circuit to actually be able to dissipate the power that is occurring during a short circuit event, either by putting a huge transistor and a huge heat sink, or otherwise limiting the current to a lower, more precise value. Something more precise than the 100 to 300 milliamps that the 317 is providing. Now, regarding the LM317, it's important to remember that the over temperature protection or thermal shutdown occurs at 180 degrees Celsius, but also the junction to ambient thermal resistance is about 160 degrees per watt. Or in other words, if you have an ambient temperature of say 20 degrees Celsius and you're dissipating one watt, only then will you reach the 180 degrees on the junction to get it into the thermal shutdown. So we need to be careful to not push the IC into this thermal shutdown when we don't really want to. So under normal operating conditions. What I'm trying to say is that we need to dimension the Zener diode so that the LM is kept in the safe operating area under normal conditions. And in case an overcurrent event does occur, only then should it heat up more than it normally does. Now, coming back to the problem of the current limit, one circuit that we can try to limit the current limit somewhere below what the LM317 is providing looks something like this. So what I have here is our basic circuit, but I added this transistor and resistor. So we've seen that some of the available schematics already have a resistor between the transistor and the LM317, and this kind of acts like a current limit, but the problem with this resistor is that there's a large voltage drop usually over it. But by using this extra transistor, once the voltage drop reaches 0.6 volts, then this is enough to activate the transistor which will pull the gate to the source pin. Or in other words, it will deactivate the transistor. So this turns the transistor into a current limited switch. So if we run the circuit, I've added a load that increases in current. And if we look at the output voltage, we can see that the output stays fairly constant, although it's starting to drop as soon as the current is increasing. But after a certain threshold is met, then the output just drops. So the current limit is helping to deactivate the circuit. Now, on the other hand, if we look at how power gets dissipated over the two elements, so on the one side, the power transistor, and on the other, the LM, we can see that as long as the circuit is in its normal operating region, so before the overcurrent limit threshold is reached, we have power dissipated in green on the LM, but also in red on the power transistor, but afterwards, the voltage drop on the LM317 drops to zero and all of the power gets dissipated on the transistor. So since the current limit is acting on the power transistor, it's reducing its output voltage. So the LM317 can no longer ensure the necessary output voltage. Or in other words, the voltage drop on that element would be very small. So no more power dissipation. 
and even though the current is limited, all of the power dissipation will occur on the power transistor. So just to see how well this overcurrent circuitry works, I prepared this setup. So what I have here is the board from last time. I just added the transistor and the resistor on top of it, so without making a new layout. And I'm supplying it from my supply. I'm monitoring the output voltage with my multimeter. And I have the active load connected to the output, so to provide a load. And just to see how the output behaves during the overcurrent event, I also connected the oscilloscope. So in yellow we have the input voltage, in blue we have the output voltage. So now, if I start to increase the load, so I'm starting off from about 9 milliamps, we can see the output is fairly stable, so small variation, but that's acceptable. But at around 60 milliamps, we see the output drops down to zero, we can see it on the oscilloscope, and the circuit is using about 30 something milliamps. Now, if we check the voltages, we can see that the voltage drop on the LM317 is about 1.6 volts. That means that the rest of the supply voltage, so about 157, is dropping on the power transistor. Now, if I reduce the load, we see that the output voltage recovers, so the circuit didn't break, but nevertheless, we no longer have our over temperature protection coming from the 317. So for short amounts of time, the circuit will survive an overcurrent or a short circuit event, but if too much power is dissipated on the power transistor, it will eventually break. So the next thing to add right now would be some method to turn off the power transistor if its temperature exceeds a certain limit. So to somehow move the over temperature protection from the LM317 to the power transistor. Now, there's one component we could try to use a PTC type thermistor. So what makes this component special is first of all, positive temperature coefficient means that resistance increases with temperature, unlike the NTC negative temperature coefficient where resistance decreases with temperature. Another important difference is the way in which resistance varies with temperature. So for example, for an NTC, the variation of resistance with temperature is fairly linear. I mean, there's an exact formula that describes this, but you have a continuous, quite linear variation of resistance with temperature. Now on the other hand, with a PTC type thermistor, you have a curve that looks something like this. So for quite a wide temperature range, resistance stays fairly constant. So starting usually from negative temperatures up until a certain threshold, the temperature is almost flat. And then when a certain threshold is reached, the resistance just shoots up. So you can see that for more than 100 degrees, the resistance is flat. And then in just a span of 20, 30 degrees, the resistance shoots up by a few orders of magnitude. Now the exact temperature at which this sudden variation occurs is different from component to component. You have different variants available, but we can take advantage of this property in our overcurrent limit. So we can use a PTC type resistor as our shunt resistor over which we measure the current. And as long as this component stays below a certain temperature, well, we have our initial current limit. But when this component starts to heat up, after a certain threshold, our current limit completely changes. So in this way, we no longer rely on the LM317 for our over temperature protection, but we can move it to our transistor. So let's try this out, see how this works. So I have here my circuit from before and I replaced the resistor with a PTC type thermistor, which I placed here right on top of the heatsink. Now, because of its shape, it's a bit more difficult to thermally attach, but this is one of the things that needs to be figured out. So this sort of component isn't really designed to be placed onto a shield. But if you can ensure good thermal contact, then you can rely on this to sense the temperature of the heatsink. So as before, I have my multimeter set to measure the output voltage, I have my power supply to supply it and the active load. So this PTC has a default value of about 12, 13 ohms. So the current limit is a bit lower than in the previous circuit. But let's just see how 
the circuit reacts. So if I start to increase the current, we see we have a fairly stable output voltage at about a bit more at about 40 milliamps or so. Our current limit kicked in, we see the output voltage dropped, we have zero volts on the output, and now our current limit is acting. So even though the output is at zero volts, there's still a bit of current going through the circuit. So right now it's at about 16 milliamps, and this is increasing. So as the circuit heats up, a bit more current will be passing through it, but this is all before the PTC goes into action. So right now the PTC is still relatively cold, but once it heats up, we should see its effect on the current limit. It's getting warmer. The finger is a very scientific way to measure temperature. So current is still increasing, but after a point we see that the threshold voltage, the threshold temperature has been achieved on the PTC and now the current is abruptly dropping. So as the PTC is heating up, its resistance is increasing and our current limit is going lower and lower. So with this sort of mechanism, even though the output is short circuited and we still have some sort of current going through the circuit, after a certain temperature is reached, the PTC will deactivate our transistor and will prevent the circuit from self-destruction. And depending on the exact PTC and its values, this behavior can be fine-tuned. So now if we quickly remove the overcurrent event, so even if I completely remove the load, normal operation is re-established, so the circuit comes back to normal operation. If I add back my load, well the PTC is still quite hot, but we can see as it cools down, our output is slowly recovering. So there's no more short circuit on the output, so the current limit is not reached anymore. As the circuit cools down, the output recovers, and we can resume normal operation. So all in all, you can build a power supply with an LM317, but also a pre-regulating high voltage transistor, and add a proper current limit that will react either on high currents or on high temperature. So depending on what circuit you actually need, various methods can be implied. And this of course will work both for the positive rail and the negative rail. So all in all, hope you got some useful information out of this, leave your thoughts in the comments, thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos, and see you next time, bye bye.